In this video, we're going to look at how to create a class using Ruby inside of the interactive Ruby shell. So let me switch over to my terminal here. And let's start interactive Ruby by issuing the command IRB. I'm going to type in a simple class de definition of song. And if you go look at the online book of programming Ruby from the Pragmatic Programmers, you'll see this example in there so you can follow along from that book also here. I'm going to enter in a few things here. I'll explain this in a second. This first thing I've entered, so I entered class song. That's the start of my class definition. Then I've entered the keyword def. That's the start of a method definition. And then there's a specialized method that I'm using called initialized. Every class needs to have one of these if it's going to be initialized, or it will inherit from the object uh, that it's subclassed from. And in this case, we're explicitly creating an initialized method. So when we create this, instantiate an object of the song class, we'll actually send in some uh, arguments, the name, artist, and duration in this case. So we need this initialized method to get this information inside of our object. And then we're going to actually set some local variables here that are equal to those parameters that we passed in. And you'll notice that there's a couple odd looking little symbols here that might be, you might wonder what they are. So I've gone ahead and, and completed the the definition of my class. The first and closed that method definition of initialize. The second and closed out my class. Now the variables with the at in front of them, so in this case at and name, that is a instant variable. So when we create this object, we're setting this parameter coming in, we're setting this local, the value of this instant variable to this parameter right here. This instant variable will retain its value as long as the, the instantiated object is around in sitting in memory. A local variable is only going to exist inside of a method as long as that method is running. Once the method is done running, that local variable goes away, whereas the instance variable will stay and retain its information for as long as the object is alive. So that's what the little at symbol means in front of the name. That's declaring it as a local variable. Now you'll notice that our class name, song in this case, with a capital S, starts with that capital S. That's important. Ruby expects that classes start with a capital letter. So there's a few conventions that you need to follow. They're not terribly difficult. Now let's go ahead and create inside of this IRB object a song object. And the way we do that is we say song. And it, it could have been anything. I could say my song. It's just a, a name of an object. And then we say song. That's our song class. And we want a new one. So we're telling the song class. Even the class itself is a type of object. We're going to say new. And the name of our song is hello. And our artist is the guy. Do some innocuous stuff so I'm not treading on anybody's copyright. So I went ahead and instantiated that object. Now I have an object called my song. If I do my song to string here, the two underscore s is a method that all objects have. It returns something that's not too readable for us. If I want to extend my class, I don't have to go in and re-declare the thing. I can simply go in, issue my class song. Now I want to override that to string method, so I'm going to say def to string. And then I'll just issue a output. And here in the previous video when we talked about how you use uh, embedded variables inside of a string and inside the double quotes and they get evaluated. So it looks like a, a lot of symbols, but it's really not. The hash is just telling the string that this is going to be evaluated. And of course, our little at sign is is saying that this is a instant variable. So it accepts that, and then we'll end that and that. Now, I'm not going to redeclare my song. I'm going to say my song to s. And it automatically picked up that new method of the two underscore s. 
I didn't have to redeclare that method. It just picked that up. That's part of the interactive nature of Ruby, and it's a very powerful thing. And we can further extend this by subclassing it and other interesting things that we'll see as we progress into Rails. I really encourage you to go to the Ruby website, the Ruby language website, and take a look around and get used to the Ruby language because it's a very powerful, useful language in its own right outside of Rails.